hello guys you're welcome back to my channel fun with physics in this lesson we are going to consider current what it is and how it can be measured that means at the end of the lesson you'll be able to tell what current is and you'll be able to tell how you can measure current using the, a measuring instrument okay now as a starter, why do metal conduct electricity? Okay, metal actually conduct electricity because they have free moving electrons in them. Now, can you see the electrons? Can you see the metal ions and can you see the electrons? These electrons are mobile, they are free to move from one point to another okay so when they move they carry energy with them all right covalent solids such as plastic do not contain free electrons and are poor conductors so they can conduct electricity okay that means where you don't have free moving electrons you have an insulator but where you have a free moving electron of course you have a conductor now in other words electric current is actually the flow of these electrons or the flow of charge in a given time okay for material to be able to conduct conduct charge must be able to flow through them so the flow of charge in a given time by these electrons or the flow of electrons which of course is the charge is what we call electric current or current electricity depending on how you want to call it okay now electric conductors and insulators there's no need for us to overemphasize on this we already know that the conductors allow current to flow why insulators don't okay but let's quickly have a quick one and see how many can be identified conductor or insulator for a rubber, I believe it's an insulator. Steel, of course, a conductor. Mercury, well, it's a conductor, even though it's a liquid. Plastic, an insulator. Diamond, an insulator. A graphite, a conductor. Okay, so for the conductors, they have something in common. We have free mobile electrons. Why insulators don't? Okay. Now let's have a, um, a magnified view of what is happening in a wire if you connect the wire to a cell okay like i said earlier electric charge is actually electric current is actually the flow of charge or the flow of electron from one point to another these electrons are actually forced to move by the cell Okay, so and the last section here shows us what is actually happening. Can you see the electrons flowing, moving from one end to the other end throughout the wire back to the positive side of the cell? Did you notice it? Now, the big things here, which are the copper atom, what did you notice that's happening to them? That's collision, right? They are vibrating due to the collision from the electron right of course if they are vibrating i know if there's collision there's going to be heat anyway that's a lesson for some other time now a complete circuit the trip of a charge from the high potential energy region to a low potential energy region is actually called a circuit that's a model this shows how charge move from one end to another end a charge flows through the bulb it takes it uh, uh, takes energy from them with them actually for electricity to flow in a circuit it must be able to flow from one end of the battery to the other end that means if there is a gap in the wire electricity will not be able to flow it has to flow from one end for electricity to flow for this bulb to get lit charge must flow from one end here to the next so if there is any obstruction in this wire, charge will not be able to flow. Okay? Take note of that. Now, how
how is current measured? It's simple. We can actually measure current using an instrument. We know we use to measure something. We need an instrument. Okay, the instrument here that we use is an ammeter. And for us to measure current flow in a circuit, all we need to do is to connect that instrument in series in the circuit. Okay, we can connect it in series with a component or in series in the circuit. That is end to end connection. All right, the positive side of the battery, positive wire, positive terminal, need to be connected to the positive side of the ammeter why the negative one has to be connected to the negative side and that way current will flow through through it okay now we have this arrangement and an ammeter here this an ammeter this is how the instrument look like can you did you notice that the negative side is connected to the dark to the black uh, side of this ammeter why the positive side of the battery is connected to the red side Okay, that's uh, this kind of connection here is what we call a series kind of connection. So the ammeter is always connected in series in the circuit. In this way, to be able to measure current flowing in the circuit, this is a circuit diagram. So that means if I'm to add, um, draw the circuit diagram here, I need to add a symbol A. So notice that here, the key or the switch comes before the lamp just like we have it here from the cell the switch before the lamp the lamp before the ammeter back to the the cell okay so the symbol for ammeter is a circle with uh, with a capital letter a or uppercase a now type uh, two types of ammeter we have basically two types the analog and the digital one the analog one is a common one here in this part of the world why the digital one um, like what we have here can be used for other purposes also it's a, a multimeter actually so we can set it to be able to measure current here okay so we can still basically have two types now Ammeters are chosen according to the size of the current being measured. If you want to measure a very small amount of current, you don't need to go for the big one, the one with wide range of value or large values. You rather go for the one with small range of values or the milliamps. The milliamps is like a thousand amp or ampere. Okay, that's a milliamp is like uh, one amp is like 0 0.001 milliamps so we basically use this one to measure to measure a very small amount of current why this one is used to measure a um, larger current compared to this so the size matter the size of uh, the current matters in your choice uh, of instrument to use okay why do you think the zero in the scale of this ammeter is not at the beginning any idea okay if you have an idea please put it on the comment section okay comment on this comment section and don't forget to like my channel don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to like the video Okay, now um, we can actually calculate current from this formula, electric charge, current times time. Remember we said current is the flow of charge in a given time. So current I will be charge per time, right? Charge per seconds. So current is the flow of charge per seconds, charge in a given time. So it's easy for you to represent what you have here with um, letters. So for current, we use I. For charge, we use Q. And for time, we use T. Okay, so basically, I is equals to the flow of charge in a par unit time. That is Q over T. Okay, now you want to calculate T, you can say Q over I, and so on. 
you can fit these formulas in a triangle so that anytime you want to calculate any of the parameters here it will be easy now from i equals to q over t notice that q here is a numerator so we put it here q which is a charge i t we multiply each other if you have to make you the subject so you put them down current time so if you have to calculate for time you're looking for time you have to say charge divided by this but if you're looking for charge you have to say current times time okay now let's take a quick one calculate the charge passing through a device when the current of 0 0.5 amps flow for three, three minutes so what you need to do here is to change the minute to seconds we leave it in the standard SI unit and then the charge can be calculated by multiplying I times T okay notice that from the triangle formula charge is current times time so we can say current times time 0 0.5 times 3 minutes which is the same thing as 180 seconds that will give us 90 coulomb Calculate the current flowing when the charge of 240 coulomb flows through a device in 80 seconds. So this is quite direct. 240 divided by 80, that gives us 3 amps. Okay, in this case, can we get this once? I want you to try it out. Try it out and see how many you can actually get. Okay, let's start with the first one. For you to get T, what do you do? Any idea? Remember, current is charge over time. That means time will be what? Charge over current. Okay, so we expect this to be 30 seconds. Okay, guys, you can do the rest, other ones, try them on your own and compare your answers with this and see if they are, if they tally. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click on the subscribe button and subscribe. If you have any question, please feel free to ask a question. I will definitely um, get back to you. Thank you.